on the A section and it starts right away with a pull off. So that's the first major phrase uh, of the piece. Within that, you have it broken down into two sections. I'll stop after the first section. Then you go up here. So it's really important to feel the offbeat accent. Sort of a rhythmic counterpoint. You have a lot going on. Now when this repeats, I do it softer. So the contrast would then be, and with a little different kind of a rubato or held back uh, on one or two notes. Okay, so if you put it all together, we have this A section played twice, um, the first time loud, second time softer, with a little perhaps tenuto on the B. So this is how it would sound put back together. So that gives you some nice contrast. So now we have the B section. B section has an interesting line in the bass. So I'm going to do something different in terms of what I bring out in that bass line versus uh, the chords that accompany it. The first time playing it, I'll do it in slow motion. This is the little, the little lick that comes right before. And then it goes, listen to the bass. Now what I'm going to do in that answer to the bass line, I'm going to instead bring out an offbeat accented chord. Like that. And I'm using a, a color called Ponticello, which is right by the bridge. It gives kind of a biting metallic sound. And again, with the Ponticello, the way to get it the most bright is to use the nails of the right hand perpendicular to the string. If I were, for example, in one place, and I played, I could vary the sound, but by changing the position, this will always be a brighter sound. This will always be a more mellow sound. So first time playing of this, bringing out the bass in a natural position. Now I'm going to do the ponticello. Accenting the chords. The second time I do that, meaning in the repeat, I'm going to do the opposite. I'll bring out in the first half of that phrase the offbeat acts, the chords, and I'll make them accented. And then I'll make the answer, everything soft, with the bass in the foreground instead of the chords. And instead of ponticello, like I did here, I'll do a very mellow sound. So in slow motion, this is what it would be. Now we have the contrast between the first playing, where it brings out the bass, and the repeat, where I do the exact opposite of that. And that gives it such a nice uh, not only contrast, but a different character because we're revisiting material we've heard already with a whole different perspective. Now it gets interesting. This is still the B section. We have a beautiful line that goes way up high. 
so you have to watch out where you're going. Uh, in a situation like that, I call it sighting, so that you actually look at the high fret before you go there. This way you're sure to go to the right place. Let's see if I do. And each one of those is sort of de da de da so you have a leaning effect with a resolution on the second note. So the first note of each of these pairs would be a little bit louder to give that effect. First time I play this, I do it pretty much in rhythm, like this. Now the second time I do it, in the repeat, I do a little rubato that's very sexy. And if you just try to imitate that with a little portamento, portamento is when you slide from one note to another like a human voice or in the reverse it's a little sort of connective sound in between two notes pianists can't do that but violinists can singers can and so can guitarists so i milk that whole nuance the second time with not only lingering, playing it softer, but adding that little portamento, the connection between the two, mo two notes to make it sound like a voice. to enter the final section, the C section. And the first time I play it, I play it strong because it uh, is especially effective having come from this very soft, sensuous, dolce little uh, rendition of the end of the B section. So that final third section. And when you get to this top note, it's nice to do a vibrato that is using more than just one finger. Just to point this out, if you use one finger on a vibrato, sounds like that. Two fingers, three fingers, four fingers. So this way you can intensify the degree to which you are creating this back and forth quality of sound we call vibrato by how many fingers you use. And in, if you do that, just remember that the point is to put the fingers as close together, not to space them out on frets because what we're trying to do is get as much grab of the string as possible so that we can shift it back and forth by pulling it this way, which makes it tighter, and pushing it this way, which makes it looser. Now, obviously, if we did it slowly, it sounds like a science fiction movie gone awry, but we do it quickly so that it sounds beautiful. And the difference between not doing it boring. And then you have that dee da 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 da. This is a piece that's constantly changing between 3-4 and 6-8. And bringing that, those changes out is really important with the right accents. Now the second time playing that I do, when I do the repeat, I'll do the opposite. I'll play it very softly. also linger on this note. So the contrast we would have between the first time and the second time this is where I crescendo back to the volume I want. So that's how dynamically you can get contrast in the repeat. Now there's another thing that I do in the first playing. We have, then I move the ponticello by the bridge, and then I move back. 
don't do that in the repeat. Now, when I'm talking about phrasing, it's, it's like speaking. When you look at a book and you open it up, you've got not only chapters, but you have paragraphs. And within those paragraphs, you have punctuation sentences, which are quite definitive. Then you have commas, you have semicolons and colons. So all of that gives us the ability to understand the meaning of what's being written and guides us in organizing the thought, understanding the thought of the writer, and speaking it. So if I were just to speak to you like this without any kind of breath and I just continued to talk in one voice like that, you'd be sick of me very quickly. So just as an actor on the stage must spend hours trying to figure out their inflection, their breathing pattern, their emphasis, their phrasing, it's the same thing in music. Everything we've been talking about here, these are phrases. This is how the music is put together. So right here, within these phrases, we have also that same idea that we had at the end of the B section. Now this is the end of the third section. We have the line on top, which is suspended and resolved. So you have, right? You feel that tension, you feel that resolution, you emphasize by giving more volume to the first note and less to the second. Now here's another phrase. That's where I'm using the ponticello. Then I come back in the next phrase. To the tasto. So keep in mind that when you make color changes, when you make dynamic changes, always change with the composer and follow the structure of the piece. So the final time I play that, I'll have come from this crescendo. We've just had. hard at the end and then stop the vibrations of the strings. Hi, I'm Sharon Isbin and this is Antonio Lauro's Waltz number three.